Hi there, Climate Action Superheroes. My name is Langley, and I'm back to bring you your weekly Climate Action mission. Roxy, are you my co-host? As always, if you haven't found out what your inner Climate Action Superpower is, you can do so anytime at climate-heroes.org. There, you can also find activities, including our Steamwork Challenge and Citizen Science Projects. Welcome back to your headquarters. All superheroes have villains, they need to defeat, and as climate action superheroes, we need to work together to save our planet and defeat the villains that are trying to wreck it. Never forget that we all have the power within us to make a difference. This week, our villain is microplastics. Before we talk about microplastics, though, we need to first understand marine debris. You might remember we learned about marine debris during our Water Warrior Steamwork Challenge, but there's so much more to learn and understand. Marine debris, or how scientists classify any trash that ends up in our oceans and fresh waterways comes in many shapes and sizes. But one of the most common types is plastic. Scientists from the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration estimate that every year, nearly 8 million metric tons of plastic end up in the ocean. Plastic stays in the ocean for a very long time because it doesn't break down like food or paper waste. Fish and other aquatic life often eat plastic marine debris when they mistake it for food or become trapped in it. But what about microplastics? Microplastics are pieces of plastic that are smaller than five millimeters. Some microplastics start out as large plastic pieces, like plastic bottles or bottle caps, and are slowly eroded by water or exposure to the sun and elements. Other microplastics are shed from plastic-based fabrics like polyester and nylon when we wash them in the washing machine. Others are what are referred to as microbeads, or small plastic beads that are used in many beauty products. So why are microplastics such an evil villain? Because the pieces are so small, they can pass through our water filtration systems and easily make their way into the ocean and other water sources. Because they are so small, are very easily digested or eaten by aquatic life, even though they don't mean to. We don't and shouldn't eat plastic, so why should other living beings? Microplastics can come from things we have in our homes and use every day. And there are ways we can help keep microplastics from ending up in the ocean and fresh waterways. Let's take a look together. If you like to drink tea at home like I do, you can remember that not all tea bags are created equal. Some are made out of paper, but some are made out of plastic. And these release tons of microplastics into your tea. So either you're drinking it and you're consuming the microplastics, or if you're not drinking it all and dumping it down the sink, those microplastics end up in our fresh waterways in the ocean. So you can either use paper tea bags or you could use loose leaf tea like this and a reusable tea strainer. Sometimes the clothes that we wear are actually made out of plastic. Fabrics like polyester and nylon are actually woven together with tiny fibers that are made out of plastic. You can help reduce microplastic in a few ways. You could wear more cotton and other natural fibers, or when you're doing your laundry, you could not wash it on a hot setting, which hot water will release more of the microplastics from the fibers. Or you can do your laundry making sure that each load is full. When there's less clothes in the washer, there's less friction and less fibers are released from your clothes. Oh, hi there. Did you know that when you're brushing your teeth or washing your face, you can be eating or using plastics? That's right. Some toothpaste, face wash, and soaps have what are called microbeads, which are tiny little pieces of plastic. Now, in the United States in 2015, Congress outlawed microbeads in beauty products, but some countries around the world still use them. What you can do in your house is make sure that your products that you're using don't have any plastic. We just learned about a lot of ways that we can help reduce microplastics. But finally, when we reduce, reuse, refuse, and recycle plastic, we can help keep it from even ending up in the water in the first place. Check out our Water Warrior Steamwork video for some ways you can reduce and refuse plastic in your house. Visit your mission headquarters anytime at climate-heroes.org and clicking join the fight. Remember superheroes, Steamwork makes the dream work and we're all in this together. Tune in tomorrow for another Steamwork. Bye.